in this next section we're going to put the rules that we've learned for working with exponents to really good use. This is an awesome tool that we're going to talk about. It's 11.7. Uh, I can write numbers using something called scientific notation. Scientific notation. Really awesome stuff. You're going to see this in, in your science classes and you'll definitely see it on the test in this class. So here's the warm-up. It says write each of the following as a number with a decimal. So when you're done writing these answers, you have to put a decimal on there, regardless of whether it's in front or in back or in middle of the, the numbers, we have to put it on there. So you'll remember that when we're working with um, numbers and we're multiplying by powers of 10, so 10, 100, 1,000, different things like that, all we have to do is count how many zeros that we've got. So in this case, we've got two zeros. And because we're multiplying by 100, we're going to move the decimal two places. So the decimal right now is right there, and we're going to move it one, two places. So we're going to end up right here, and we're going to put in two extra zeros. So this is 416 with two zeros on it, and I'm going to put a decimal, and I'm going to put a zero right there. That is the answer that we want. We want it written with a decimal. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. Here we're dividing by 1,000, and you'll notice that it has three zeros. So we're going to move the decimal to the left three spaces. So when we were multiplying by a power of 10, we move it to the right. And we're when we're dividing by a power of 10, we move it to the left. So we're going to, the decimal's right here. And then we're going to go 1, 2, 3. Now, I am in the habit of writing the decimal and just writing uh, 0.416. We do want to be a little bit more correct here, so I'm going to go ahead and put a zero here so we know that we've got zero for the whole numbers and then 0 0.416 for the decimal part. And then we've got 10 to the power of 1, so this is just memorizing those powers of 10. That means we're going to have one zero, or it's just going to keep it a 10. All right. Next one, 10 squared. That means 10 times 10, which is 100. And remember, we've got uh, 2 for an exponent, and we've got two zeros on the answer. Quick way to remember that. So 10 to the third is going to be a 1 followed by three zeros. Again, having those powers of 10 memorized are really useful um, in lots of different problems, let alone what we're going to do today, because they're going to be super important. So if we look at this one, you'll notice that we've got a negative exponent. And remember, the negative in the exponent means reciprocal. So we're going to write 1 over 10 to the first which we could just write as 1 over 10. And as a decimal, this is going to be 0.1, or to make this look a little nicer, 0 0.01. 10 to the negative 2, again, this is going to be 1 over 10 squared. The negative means reciprocal, so we put that in the denominator. So this is 1 over 100. So that would be 1 one hundredth, 1 one hundredth. So that's going to be 0 0.01. Again, we'll put the decimal in front of that. So there's our answer on that one. And then we've got 10 to the negative 3, 1 over 10 to the third, which we know from up above is 1,000. So that would be 1 one thousandth. So the decimal there would be 0 0.001 tenths, hundredths, thousandths. So 1,000th. Thousandth. Put the zero in front so we get that looking right. And there we go. And then let's take a look at this one. This one's 73.9 times 10 to the 0. Well, remember, 10 to the 0 just means times 1. So this is going to be 73.9. It doesn't change this number at all. And then if we have negative uh, 19.23 times 10 to the 0, that's just a 1. So this is going to be negative 19.23. The decimals on each one of these. I need to, to go back and put the 0 here to make that technically correct on each one of these. OK, so we've got the 0 on each one of these numbers right here. And you'll see why keeping track of where the decimal is is so important when we do the assignment for today. So as a quick review of how to make this multiplication thing and division thing a little bit easier, when we multiply by, say, a number like 1,000, if it's a 1 followed by three zeros, when we're multiplying, we're going to move the decimal the same number of zeros. So that's going to be three places. And when we multiply by a number, we're making it bigger. So we're going to move it to the right. So three places to the right. So for example, multiplying by 1,000, three places to the right. If we're dividing by the number 100, again, it's a power of 10. We count how many zeros there are. So we're going to move it two places. And because we're making it smaller, we move it to the left. So when we're multiplying by a power of 10, we move it to the right, same number of places as there are zeros. And we're dividing by a power of 10, we move it to the left, the same number of places as there are zeros. Now, we usually work with really nice numbers. They're a relatively convenient size. They're pretty easy to understand, like how many they represent and things like that. They're not too big. They're not too small. Pretty awesome numbers that we deal with most of the time. But in real life, in science and engineering, numbers can be extremely small or extremely large. For example, now these are real numbers. This is the national debt. 
of the United States of America, and it is currently this gigantic number right here. So let's let's see if we can make sense of this. This would be thousands, this would be millions, this would be billions, and this is trillions. So this is 21 trillion 194 billion. That is a huge amount of money. And this next number represents the weight of an atom of gold. So it's in grams. So if you had one atom of gold, you would have this much of a gram. Now a gram is a tiny amount of weight, and this is teeny tiny. Gosh, we wouldn't even know how to say that number like we would maybe millions, billions, or trillions. This is teeny tiny. I mean, look at how many zeros there are after the decimal. So if we had to multiply or divide these types of numbers in what we call standard form, like regular old numbers, these are in standard form, like decimal form, it would be extremely hard. Okay, very, very hard. Think about keeping track of all of the decimal places. I mean, we could multiply these together, but we'd have to keep track of how many decimal places there are here, how many zeros there are, how many decimals there are here. That would be crazy. So to avoid this type of difficulty and trouble when we're multiplying and dividing numbers like this, mathematicians and scientists figured out a way to write down very big and very small numbers in a really easy format. And this format is called scientific notation. Scientific scientific notation. So scientific notation takes advantage of the properties of exponents. Properties of exponents and the fact that our number system is kind of based on exponents. It's based on powers of 10. So it's based on the properties of exponents and the fact that our number system is base 10. So we're going to take a look at a couple of problems here and see how we can write these using scientific notation. Then we'll give you the rules for writing numbers in scientific notation. So here's what we do. We take the number 4,000 and we think, well, I can write that as 4 1,000. So 4 times 1,000, kind of like the problems that we did up above. And if we write 1,000 using exponents, we get this. We get 4 times. Now we're not going to write this as 1,000. We're going to write it as a power of 10. So this is going to be 10 times, or sorry, 10 to the third. Remember, it's the same as the number of zeros that the number has. So this is like we did up above. 10 to the third was given in the warm-up problem when we said the answer is 1,000. So basically what we're going to do is wherever we see a 1,000, we're going to replace it with a 10 to the third. Wherever we see a 10 to the second, we replace it with a 100 and so forth. So let's come down here and take a look at another one. It says 5,900 can we be written this way. 5.9 times 1,000. So 5 full 1,000 and then 10, or sorry, 9 tenths of a 1,000. So 0 0.9 times 1,000, that would be 90% of 1,000, that would give us 900. So if we write the 1,000 with an exponent, we get this. So we're going to keep that decimal number right here, 5.9, and then we're going to write times 10 to the third. So there are two examples, one with a decimal number right here and one without. And then let's take a look at some small numbers. So this is 0 0.03, so that's three hundredths. So that can be written as three times a hundredth. Now notice I just changed the wording right here. Okay, so three times a hundredth. And if we write one hundredth using exponents, we get this. This is three, and then this would be one over ten to the second. So we're going to move that in the numerator. Remember that exponent rule with negative, so we can move it from top to bottom or bottom to top. So this would be 10 to the negative 2. All right. So let's take a look at the next one. We've got 0 0.067. That can be written this way. This is 6.7 hundredths. Now I know that seems really weird that we do something like that, but if you move the decimal over two places, this is 6.7 hundredths. It's six full hundredths and then almost another full hundredth. So that's kind of a weird way to write that, but we can write 6.7 and then um, one one hundredth, we already figured out that we can write that as 10 to the negative 2. Now you'll notice that even as different as these numbers were, when we write it down in this format, there's some th things that are really similar. We've got a decimal number right here, and then we've got 10 to some power. So even though the numbers in their original format were way different, over here they're very similar. So as you can see, the big numbers, these numbers like 4,000 and 5,900, have positive exponents. So that's one big difference here. And the small numbers that were done second, they have negative exponents. So let's talk about the rules for writing numbers in scientific notation. So first of all, the numbers must be written in this form, m times 
10 to some power. So I'm going to do 10 to the power of n. So it's got to be a number times 10 to some power. Well, you'll notice that's what we have here. We've got a number times 10 to some power in every one of these. And this number m, this decimal number that sits in front like all of these, it must be a number with only one non-zero digit in front of the decimal. So we have to make sure that if we wrote this out, 4.0, 5.9, 3.0, and 6.7. We're only allowed to have one non-zero digit in front of the decimal. Those are the rules for writing things in scientific notation. That's just the way they chose to do it. And frankly, there's a lot of good common sense reasons for doing it that way. But this is what we're going to have to get used to. So writing these in scientific notation, it's actually a lot easier than it seems. So let's take a look. On this problem right here, the first thing we want to do is identify where is the where is the decimal to begin with. The decimal to begin with is right here. And I'm going to zoom in on this just a tad. Okay. So it says write each number in scientific notation. The decimal is right here to begin with. The rules for writing in scientific notation say you can only have one non-zero digit in front. And right now we've got one, two, three, four, five digits in front. So we only want one. So we're going to move it over here. One, two, three, four. So we're going to move it right there. So we're going to write 1.52. All right, I'm going to go ahead and zoom back out here. So then we're going to say this is going to be times 10 and let's keep track of what happened here. We took this decimal and we moved it four places. So I'm going to put a four for the exponent because that's going to make this have four zeros. And you'll notice that we're representing a big number and big numbers are represented with positive exponents. We're going to get a little bit more into that in just a second. But this is the answer. So 1.52 times 10 to the fourth. There we go. That's written in scientific notation for the next one and you'll notice that these are all big numbers so the decimal is right here so we're gonna count this is three six nine places I'd have to move that nine places so this is gonna be five point two three times ten to some power so all we need to do is make sure that there's one non-zero digit in front of the decimal and then keep track of how many places we move the decimal so it, we moved it nine places so this is gonna be to the ninth power and it's positive because this is a bigger one Again, we'll talk more about how you can figure out whether it's positive or negative in just a second. All right, so on this one here, let's count. Decimals right here to begin with. Because it's got commas in here, that makes it a little bit easier. 3, 6, 9, 12. And now if we put it right here, that would put um, 19, two digits in front of the decimal, so we can't do that. So we need to move it 12 and then 13. So this is going to be 1.93 times 10 to some power. Again, it's always the same format. And then we're representing this huge number, so this is going to be to the positive 13th. So we're going to go ahead and circle that. So for each place we've moved the decimal to the left, and every single one of these we're moving the decimal to the left because we're representing these huge numbers. Okay, then we add 1 to the exponent. So we'll 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, okay, that's 9, that's 12, and then 13. So we added 13 to the exponent. It's kind of like you start at 0 there. Now, if we keep that in mind, then here, here we go for these smaller numbers. For each place you move the decimal to the right, you subtract 1 from the exponent. So let's take a look at what happens here. The decimal is right here, and we need to move it so there's one non-zero digit in front. Notice there's a digit in front, it's just a zero, and if we move it here, it's still a zero. We've got to move it, this is two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let me count here. There's six, there's seven, yep. Okay, so this is going to be 9.78 times 10 to some power, and again, because we're representing this with uh, an, an exponent, we're going to use a negative. We're representing the small number, so we're going to have a negative 7 right here. So there is the answer on this one. And if you thought of it this way, if we were multiplying this by 10 to the 0, remember that's a 1, we're going to subtract 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We're going to subtract 7 from that, so 0 minus 7 would be negative 7. The same thing could happen here. We could times that by 10 to the 0, and we would add 1, 2, 3, 4, so 0 plus 4. That's why we've got that there. You don't have to think of this, but it is kind of a, a neat way to kind of keep track of things, and we'll also make this a little bit easier on the back side. So let's take a look at this. We're going to move this 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is 4.3 times 10 to some power. And then we just need to think, hey, we were making this bigger, so we've got to make this smaller by four digits. So this is going to be negative 4 for an exponent on that one. And then here's that number that we came up with up above. This was the number of of 
uh, grams in an atom of gold. So we're going to move this, and I'm going to count in threes. So this is 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, another one would be 22. So this is going to be 3 point, whoops, 3.27 times 10 to the tiny little number, negative 22. So I'll go ahead and circle that answer right here, um, and there we go. We've written each one of those in scientific notation. All right, so here's the other way that you can think of this. If you make the decimal number bigger, so on each one of these we made the decimal number bigger. It was this tiny little decimal, we moved it over till it's 9.78. So if we make the decimal number uh, bigger, you need to make the exponent smaller to compensate. So we go from an exponent of zero, we make them really small exponents, we make them more negative if you want to think of it that way. And if you make the decimal number smaller like we did here, the decimal number originally was 15,200, we made, we made it 1.52. If we make the decimal number smaller, then you need to make the exponent bigger to compensate. So there's a couple different ways you, that you can keep straight, you know, whether we have a positive exponent or a negative and how much we, we, uh, we do there. But let's try some that are a little bit more difficult. So so this one says, again, right in scientific notation, but here's the deal. It kind of already looks like it's in scientific notation. It's a number times 10 to some power. But the problem is the decimal right now is right at the end. We've got two non-zero digits in front. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to move it over this way. So this is now 7.9 times 10. We've got to figure out what the exponent is. Well, remember, if we made this smaller, we're going to make this bigger to compensate. So if we made it smaller by one decimal place, we went from 79 to 7.9, we're going to add one to the exponent, so this would be 10 to the 10th. So I'm going to go ahead and circle that. Same type of idea here. This is not in scientific notation because we don't have a non-zero digit in front of the decimal. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to move it over. So this is going to be 2.1. We went from 0.21 to 2.1. So here's what we have to do. If we made the decimal number bigger, we're going to need to make this smaller. Now, here's where people make a mistake. They look at this and think, oh, this is negative 14. I need to make it smaller, so I'm going to do negative 13. It is not negative 13. It is not negative 13, because remember, if you make that smaller, you're going to subtract one from it, so that's going to make this negative 15. So I'm going to go ahead and circle that. Big star by these, because you've got to make sure that you're keeping track of which direction you're moving it, so you need to know if you need to compensate by making the exponent bigger or smaller by however many decimal places you put it, uh, moved it. So let's take a look at these last couple. It says put A through D in order from smallest to largest. And it says, hint, how can you tell which is bigger or smaller without putting the numbers in standard form? Well, if we did put it in standard form, we'd move this over five places. So this would be, let's see, seven. We'd go one, two, three, four, five. Take a look. Okay, that's 790,000. Okay, pretty big number. Um, this we'd have to move over eight places. So let's see, this would be two and two and two and two. So I'm going to do two zeros in each one of those. Okay, so that would be a comma and that would be a comma. So this is 600 million. All right. This one, we're going to move the decimal 10 places to the left. So holy cow, let's see, there's, there's one. And then I need to go three, 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 and three. Okay, teeny tiny number. Okay, there's three, 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 and there's the nine eight. Again, um, the reason I counted in threes here and twos over there is because it went evenly into there. So that was one space to the left, and then that leaves me with nine more spaces. So I fill those in. So teeny tiny number there. And then this last one, 7.9 times 10 to the negative 6, we've got to move it six spaces to the left. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to do a big one here and a big one here, and just knowing I need to put three zeros. And then I moved it uh, three places, but that takes up one of the places of a zero. So this is 0.00079. Now, they are in order, or sorry, they are written in uh, standard notation. And then we can look at them and say, gosh, this one's the biggest. That one's next biggest, and of these two, this is the smallest, and, and that one's the next smallest. We could do that, no question about it. But I want you to take a look at something. The cool thing about scientific notation is notice what the exponents are. So the bigger the positive exponent is, the bigger the number is. 
So this was an 8, and the bigger the negative number, the smaller the overall number is in standard form. So if we go ahead and order these from smallest to largest, this is the smallest one right here. So I'm going to write 9.8 times 10 to the negative 10. The next smallest is right here, 7.9 times 10 to the negative 6. Uh, let's see, now we're second biggest right here, 7.9 times 10 to the 5th. And then the biggest of all of these is this guy right here, 6 times 10 to the 8th. And you'll notice again that this is the smallest one. It's got the largest negative exponent, if you want to think of it that way. And this is the biggest one. It's got the largest positive exponent. So as we go through here, you can kind of see negative 10 for an exponent, negative 6 for an exponent, 5 per ex for an exponent, and 8 for an exponent. And you can see those just kind of going in order like they would on the number line. Now, if we did have two numbers where it was like a tie, let's say that we had another one that was, let's say it was 8.7 times 10 to the fifth, well, where would that, that that go? Would that go down here or would it go up here? Then you look at this this decimal number for the tiebreaker. Okay, so if we had that, it would go right there. Now we're going to finish this off by uh, writing each one of these numbers in standard form. You'll notice that this isn't really in scientific notation, and neither is this because this number has a non or sorry has a zero in front of the decimal, and this one has two non-zero digits in front of the decimal. But the idea is the same. Because this is a positive exponent, we're going to move this decimal six places and we're going to make it bigger. So we're going to move it to the right. So I'm going to go three spaces and another three spaces. So this is going to be 69200, so 692,000. And on this one, we're going to move it four places to the left because we're going to make it smaller. So there's two spaces and there's another two spaces. So we've got two zeros to fill in with, so 0 0.003986. And there we go. All right, really good skill to practice with the scientific notation stuff. Practice it. Make sure you have it down because we are going to be using this in the next couple sections.